Greetings in the name above all names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. This is part one of the glory is departed. 1 Samuel chapter 4. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in the ray against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew off the army in the field, about 4,000 men. This came as quite a shock to the Israelites. Because what does the word say here? They pitched besides Ebenezer. Ebenezer, hitherto have the Lord helped us. On this occasion, the The Lord did not help them. In fact, the Lord was very much against them. He had allowed the Philistines to to slay of the army of the Israelites. They had become so confident in the, uh, the Israelites that in the past the Lord on most occasions had been on their side. He had been their leader, and he had not failed them. Yet there were conditions that had to be met in order for the Lord to be on their side. And the conditions on this occasion had not been met. In the previous studies, from 1 Samuel, the, uh, what, something like a couple of weeks ago. It seen that God had not been pleased. He had not been pleased with, with the priesthood. Not been pleased with the two sons of Eli, the high priest. Two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They had corrupted the ways of the Lord. They had not carried out the duties of the priest. Instead, they had looked to take that which was for themselves rather than giving God that which was for himself alone and for the glory of God. And these two men, Hophni and Phinehas, they were being called the sons of Belial. In other words, the sons of the devil. And God would have nothing at all to do with them. And God had pronounced his his judgment. God had made it very clear both through a prophet who had gone to Eli to say what would happen, that Eli's, the line of Eli would come to an end and there would not be a young man left in his house. There would be nothing left to carry on. And two, Samuel, as, as a child, he had been wakened by by the Lord God and he had been given a message which he had given when Eli asked him what the Lord had said and this had been that yes Hophni and Phinehas would die in one day and this was about to to be fulfilled this was the start of God's judgment against Israel and the, and in particular against the house of Eli that the house of Eli would be brought to its end and God had his man ready 
his prophet ready, his prophet and his priest, because Samuel not only was a prophet, but he carried out too the priestly duties, the sacrifices which were required according to the law which God had given unto Moses. So the word of the Lord had come not just to all part of Israel, but the word had gone forth to the whole of Israel. And there had been this call because the Philistines, yes, it was God himself who brought, who brought the Philistines against Israel. It was in the purpose of God, the plan of God. God's ways are always perfect, even though they may be the ways of judgment. We don't question God on these matters. We accept that there are times when he has to bring judgment, because the judgment is deserved. Because He's not just a God of all love, as he's been made out in these days. It's been forgotten by that which should know better, the church, that God is also a God of judgment, and his judgment will come when he is being disobeyed when the church is in apostasy. Just like in the Old Testament, judgment had to follow, to follow that which was sin against God himself. And in particular, sin which is within that which calls itself the representatives of God. So let's, let's look here. There they were. The Israelites. And what they were, were oh, ever so confident that God would, would give them victory. But God did not give them victory. God was out to clear, to clear out that which was in disobedience to himself, which was in apostasy to himself, which had brought a disgrace upon that which was calling itself the priesthood of the day. God was looking and God was acting as what he'd seen he'd not liked. So he was now acting with a clearing out process as it were. For he had his man to bring about a restoration. But first of all, there had to be that clearing out. Let's look at some more verses from verse 3 onwards. The people... They came to the camp, yes, well, yes, the camp, they were pitched, he says, besides Ebenezer. So having suffered this heavy defeat, they came back and started to question. The elders of Israel said, they were, they were, well, why, why, why has this happened? Wherefore hath the Lord it had already been done. The, 
Hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Question mark. And there had to be a reason. But they hadn't seen it. But instead of waiting upon the Lord and hearing from the Lord, they said, Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us. Their trust, their confidence, was in the ark of the Lord. And the most precious, that which is most precious, the, the ark of the Lord representing the presence of God, representing the glory of God, representing God amongst his people, was where they were going to send for and put their trust that the Ark of, of the Covenant coming into their midst would then give them victory in the next battle against the Philistines because the Philistines hadn't gone away. They were ready for, as it were, another round, another battle. And they were saying, when it cometh among us, it may, interesting here, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. There come an uncertainty here. They were unsure. Whereas before, they'd had their confidence completely in the Lord. Now, the elders were starting to be unsure. Well, why did the Lord not, not give us victory? And what is this to tell us? Even in our own day, because in our own day, in the midst of apostasy, in the midst of having turned away from God, there are those who are supposedly the representatives of God in these days are not putting their trust entirely in God himself. They're not living for God alone. And instead, wanting to see that which is visible, putting their trust in the scene, like they were here, instead of the unseen. For it's the unseen realm, the realm of the Spirit of God. That our trust has to be in. That's faith. Faith is in the unseen things of God. Rather than that which must see to believe. Faith is believing without seeing. So what happened next? It says, interesting too here, it says the people sent to Shiloh. It's not saying that the elders sent to Shiloh. 
that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of what? The Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts. The, and hear that name of God. The Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts, yes, it is known. It was known even by the people that he dwelt between the cherubims. God. As far as the people were concerned, dwelt amongst his people at Shiloh. And the Ark of the Covenant was that which spoke to them that God was amongst his people. And they were expecting that as the Ark of the Covenant was brought amongst them, the Lord of hosts, God himself, would come and be amongst them. And, and what was happening here, God was bringing to pass not just part of what he said would happen, but all of what he said would happen. Because who had to come with the Ark of the Covenant? It wasn't just going to be brought by anyone. It was the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, who had to come, who with, they had to bring the Ark of the Covenant of God. So they, yes, they did that what they were requested to do. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that which was seen to be holy, the holiness of God, had come, into the camp. And they got, oh, they, they shouted, all right, at those in the camp. They saw this as turning the situation to be in their favor. They saw this as the answer to the threat and the defeat by the Philistines. And they fully expected God to act on their behalf and give them a victory in the further battle against the Philistines. And this great shout went up and it was such a shout that it says the earth rang again. What about the Philistines? What was their reaction to this? When they heard the noise of the shout, they couldn't help but not hear it. They say, well, what, what's this shout? What's it all about? And they knew that this shout could only come from one place. And that was the camp of the Hebrews. And they soon found out that the shout was because the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. And the reaction of the Philistines, instead of a shout of triumph, 
was that of fear. And they, incredibly, we might say, here are people who were heathens. They didn't worship the God of the Hebrews. They said, God is come into the camp. There was an acknowledgement that the Ark of the Covenant represented the God of the Hebrews. And they knew from past experience that God had acted on the behalf of his own people, the Hebrews, and caused them to triumph. They said, Woe unto us. And who shall deliver us out of their hand? In, again, they say, These mighty gods, gods rather than God. But they know that under normal circumstances they were in trouble. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Oh, they knew the history, all right, of the Hebrew people. And the reaction was, well, they'd known they just had a victory. They're starting to have some confidence in themselves. They weren't looking to God, a gods. They were looking to be self-sufficient, self-assertive. Saying, be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines. You don't want to be servants of the Hebrews. They've been servants to you. Go out there and fight. And they did that. They went out and thought and were told Israel was smitten again and the defeat was so great that they fled into their tents and there was a great slaughter not just a bit of a slaughter because this time not 4,000 died, but 30,000. What a defeat. That defeat was permitted by God. He'd allowed this to happen. The Philistines would not have been able to do that had the Hebrews been in the right relationship with their God. He would have given them the victory. This is serious. And what on, not only that, we're told the ark of God was taken. What a great, great tragedy. That would never have happened 
there would be no need to call for the ark of God. Had, had the people, and in particular those who were there to be the representatives of God, fulfilled that what they should have been doing, but they couldn't do it because they knew not God. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, which says were slain, they died. Now isn't that a message for these days? That God will only act on behalf of those who are his people. His people being in a right relationship with himself. Being one with himself. Being in agreement with the purpose of God for these days. Otherwise, just like what had taken place in the time of Hophni and Phinehas, will unfold itself in these days against that which calls itself the church and is every bit in apostasy as Hophni and Phinehas were because the church is not living not acting for the glory of God and the glory of God alone. Thank thee, O God, and praise thee and worship thee that through this word can see that it is being in that right relationship with thyself, whether as individuals are as nations, are as that which calls itself church. For without that, there is that which is open and for thyself to bring thine own judgment against that which is not living and acting for thy glory and for thy glory alone. Amen.